Thank you, Alex. The game has changed today. Playing for a spot in the legend stage of I Am Katowice or playing and going home. Two very different things. Vici and NIP. Vici been very impressive throughout this event so far. Have raised a lot of eyebrows. And the Ninjas, they can't drop anything. This They need everyone to show up. Rez was quiet until yesterday. Forrest has been dominant. But everyone needs to pick up their game collectively here today. They certainly do. I mean, Nip, we've seen very two very different sides to this team on train. Losing to Windstrike earlier, then of course having a victory against Vega Squadron just yesterday. On the T side though, Nip will be starting things off with a pretty heavy box hall presence. Couple of smokes, Molotov flashbang. Enough utility to explode onto the site with Freeman is waiting there and he is joined by Kaze at the back towards Connector. One thing to keep your eye on the radar, Dennis is over towards Ivy. How aggressive is he going to be on this lurk? How long is he going to wait before he believes the Vici rotation has happened? Or is he going to show himself early to try and pull a rotation back towards this outer bomb site? A lot of questions to be asked. Here comes his first peek. He spotted absolutely nothing. There's a nice little trap set up here. Now he's shown himself, and now he can back away slowly. NIP still not moving until just now. Smokes come out. Big task for the defense ahead. Kaze is able to get above the smoke, but can't really connect too much in the process. Freeman from point blank range. You get the freebie on Rez. Not going to be able to stop the bomb from being planted, but does instantly neutralize left row, putting it into a two on four now with Forrest and Get Right with their backs against the wall, trying to fend off this retake, and they cannot do a single thing about it. Vici pick up first round in this best of three. That is super bold from NIP. They're trying to get a little bit tricky, it looks like. Even with Get Right with that Molotov, the, the bomb's completely on the other side side of the train and they didn't even clear they didn't even get anyone res is the only person being aggressive when we've seen those strategies work it's multiple people pushing down those lanes so you can at least get that trade kill and secure the bomb site and planning in the open like that maybe a little bit of uh, disrespect maybe they just didn't expect maybe they saw something in the demos but that backfires entirely the planter can't even get away in time to have any impact on the on the game one to nothing for Vici, a good start. We're going to get the Augs out immediately. And why not? You've seen NIP throughout this tournament, especially yesterday, able to win some of these second rounds, able to win some rounds with Deagles and Glocks in the middle of the half. Vici wanted to make sure that doesn't happen today. And of course, one of the reasons why double AWP setups are so prevalent, so strong on this map, but there are open areas to exploit, and the Org certainly is a weapon that is seeing more and more use. It's so good at range, so good up close. Can spray with it very easily. But Vici are going to have to fend off against four Desert Eagles and the CZ. This is still very much of a threatening round. They cannot take this line down. They have got the first kill, though, Mosey. That's going to leave it a lot of pressure. And look how confident they are just with these Augs. able to stand in the open and just hold the angle against the Deagle. Forrest looking for something, anything. Dennis is back towards Ivy again. Everyone's spread out for NIP. Everyone's just looking for at least one kill that can maybe open something up for the rest of them. Forrest, the most aggressive of anyone. And actually, there's his chance right there. Almond's out in the open, but that AUG is just too strong. Second kill in the round for Almond. Dennis now moving up towards Ivy. Advent has his eyes on this, and get right down ladder is going to fall to Zoking. It should be a clean round for Vici. They don't lose anyone. All five players survive. But AK's come out now for NIP. Just the one death in two rounds. Vici off to a cracking start, but as you say, AK-47's on the horizon. Lecro 4.7k can easily pick one up as well. And he will have full grenades behind it. I'm kind of curious if we're going to start to see more of the SG picked on our maps like this. For the same reason the Org's powerful, the SG could certainly have quite a bit of impact. I think the difference is I feel like the, the, the scope weapon makes it so much easier to hold an angle versus peeking into an angle with it. Obviously a lot of players, the AK is still very strong. Molotov down on lower ramp, NIP, a lot of pressure. It looks like they actually did want to hit that. All five players are here. The defense is starting to shift, but that, at least at the moment, Vici has no idea how many players are in those box halls, and that force out of the Molotov is actually pretty big. They don't have to worry about running through flames on that lower ramp. There's only one Molotov left on the CT side. That's on Zoking, and he's actually in ladder rooms. So he won't be able to use it on the execute. The worry here for Nip, though, is they have nobody watching the flank at all. 
They're all clumped up in box halls. They're fully committed to this. For all they know, Vici are flanking, so they're going to just go ahead and push straight in. Flashbang does affect Freeman, but he's still able to land the kill alongside Kaze, who is lighting them up at the back of the site. Again, Nip are going to be able to get onto the site and maybe get the ball planted, but it should be another retake coming to fruition. Barring a left row, magical clutch. He's been spotted and he's been franked. Vici off to a 3-0 lead. Yeah, a little bit of a jump on the rotation for Vici. Get right, not expecting that player to be so close on sidewalk, and that's part of the problem. That third player was in there right when the hit was coming through, so he's able to get a jump on that push. Well played from Vici. Pretty simple tactics so far from NIP. It's only been three rounds and a 3-0 lead for Vici, but a lot of emphasis on that beat bomb site. Not a lot of spread across the map, not a lot of looking for picks from the ninja's side of things. They gotta be careful as well. They haven't done great at, at finding kills. They only have three so far. So money's gonna start to grow for the defense. Sean was pretty, uh, as you mentioned, critical of the pick of train instead of going for a nuke punish. And I guess we'll see exactly how this works out. But as this half goes on, perhaps see why you'd expect something special out of NIP. This round only get right has utility. And they're going to walk right into an AWP. This is going to be the... F Ooh, no, he misses a shot. The Molotov deep. It's going to force all of the ninjas away. But again, all five players towards inside. Yeah, because of their lack of utility, they can't afford to throw their one smoke down to extinguish the Molotov and push aggressive. So nades like that are going to be doubly effective now from Vici. As you say, clumped up. Vici haven't such really shown the initiative to go for flanks just yet, but this is something they may do in later rounds. Look how centralized their defense is already, though. One player in ladder room, one player along that outer wall. He can rotate quickly. Second player at this inner bomb site. This time, no one's coming down that lower ramp, but Freeman on the bomb train. They need to clear him out. Good job from Forrest. These alts can still do work, but Rez able to finally take down Advent, get that entry into the bomb site. Oh, and a team kill from Kaze. I don't know if maybe he got startled or maybe. His teammate just ran in front of the crosshair, but that is a nice little benefit to NIP. They get their first round, finally cracking into that B-bomb site. Well, ninjas are certainly thankful, that's for sure. Yeah. And in doing so, Vici now going to have to replenish their fallen weapons. So they've been on cruise control up until this point, but this again is how cruel the CT side is. You can have a great start, but as soon as you lose a round, it's going to be a costly investment. They have no money in the bank after this round. No kits as well. If NIP can do a solid execute and get the bomb planted. Now, NIP has run that strategy, what, three of the four rounds that they've played so far? Basically four people towards in or at least... Three of those rounds. The only round that didn't happen is the second when they had deagles and spread across the map. Here again, they're going to spread and change things up. That op at the moment, at the back of the inner bomb site on Kaze. Joined by Freeman, playing a bit more passive angles. Freeman's been on the bomb train, connector, on ramp. This time playing more to the orgs effectiveness but as you say Moses a bit of a more split and pick approach from the ninjas they're starting to make a move through Ivy smoke and Molotov deployed allowing them some real estate this is where Advent really does need to shine if he doesn't get a kill at least stay alive long enough to allow the rest of the team to come in but he has picked up Forest extinguishes him from the push and in the meanwhile Orman is going home with his orc putting it down to just res a nightmare Potentially for night ninjas of pajamas is finally they went around and putting a brook straight back in. Yeah, not not potentially a nightmare. That is the nightmare. Four to one for Vici. A great response. Force needed that entry. I like the idea. Get your star player in a position to make a play onto the bomb site, wrap around and eliminate the linchpin of the defense on side on that bomb train. Fortunately can't handle the SMG in the narrow corridor. They've got some money because of the previous win. They had a pretty strong win. They can still get three AK-47s. They have decent utility as well. But this was a tough hit for them. Even get right, I believe, getting flanked out in the ladder room. Back to a similar approach again in round six. Advent thought about that push, but the flashbang is going to stall it. In comes Forrest, looking for his double spray, he's gonna connect. And Advent and Ormond, the Ivy players, have been neutralized. This forces Kaze's hand to move over and fill in the gaps, but now Vici are so thinly spread across the map. Yeah, and they even spotted Kaze. It's a nice little individual play from Forrest, the first kill, and then a delayed peek onto the second player. 
And no one from NIP on the other sides of the map have made a move quite yet. Get right still holding box halls. He's all on his own. One player in ladder room for Vici, one player in connector, and NIP still just waiting patiently, seeing if there's going to be some kind of an information play. The positions of Vici, though, if NIP decide to push out of A main, things could get a little bit sketchy for them. This could still turn around. Oh yeah, they have a good they have a good read. They're gamble gamble stacking the outer bomb site in this three on five. If Kaza can get a pick or two with that op and thin the herd before the rifles have to get into position. That would be so, so nice. He's going to have a chance. Here they come. Flashbang is perfectly timed. He misses his opening shot, but there's ladder room. Still big advantage for MIP. 30 seconds left with, with which to utilize it too, but Zoking is the last remaining Vici player. He's been spotted in Pop Dog. Force has the ball. He's back in T mid, and that's a big time peak. Look at the HPs. That's so close. That was almost a very scary situation if Force couldn't have made it to the bomb train. I think NIP have finally done it, though. I think this should force a save out of the Vici side. Goes to show how brutal the opening pick that Forrest was able to get with this double spray, which you're going to see now from Ivy. Instantly Vici on the back foot. I, they must have misread the money. They must have thought that was going to be a save run. Those, both of those players were very committed. It's not necessarily unusual to see that first player push down with some utility from the support, but for both of them to get caught in the... And that alley is a bit rough. So Vici now, no Kevlar, few pistols sprinkled here and there. We'll be looking to play more forward positions as a result. Really any key kills would be a nice juicy bonus, but it's not really looking too likely at this stage. Get right tossing a smoke down lower ramp, not utilizing it. Maybe just trying to get some counter nades, a counter Molotov or flashbang. Definitely showing a little bit of presence towards inner to make Vici feel nervous. A third player has come to this inner bomb site. Molotov, just to make sure though pesky CT is hiding in Ivy with the close angles. Where the pistols really do shine. More players now maneuvering across to the B side. Four player strong Vici. Advent originally on the A side of the map. Time is starting to dwindle a little bit though. MIP gonna have to get a move on. Starting to make a move outside. Advent is using the bomb as his sanctuary, but it has been found out from Dennis. And Vici will crumble alongside him. MIP on the brink of just cutting this deficit to one round. Ooh, hello. Freeman's had a good start to this game. He's won three of the three opening duels that he's had. And obviously some fine deal work here. Anything else he can get would be great. Forrest holding this with the AWP, and that's a nice shoulder peek. Forrest gonna get into some safety as get right. Who else? On the flank, on the lurk, and Freeman's gonna go down here. Oh, okay. <laughs> Don't do that to me, guy, right? <laughs> Not you. You're too pure. Three to four, still in the favor of Ichi on the defense, but this is nice for NIP. Looked a little bit sketchy those first three rounds, or, you know, maybe even the first five rounds, considering that's when Vici got their four. A lot of those hits towards the inner bomb site falling flat, but now that they've taken control of the economy, don't have to worry about an AWP at the moment. Already at three, this is a good place to be for the ninjas, especially if they can win this. Vici have gone for the buy. A couple players right on the edge. The AUG players don't have enough money to get utility behind it, and a couple players relegated to FAMAS. So a pretty big advantage of Arsenal of firepower for NIP. After a rocky start, seemingly starting to calm the nerves a little bit. We saw Pitto in his interview earlier. Look pretty anxious to say the least. A lot on the line, understandably. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know if that was because of their opposition. I would imagine it's just because they've fallen flat since in a, in a few games throughout this this challenger stage. And obviously, an elimination game at the major is going to make anyone nervous. Fire rains down, and Freeman gives death. They line up for him, but he cannot connect. That was close to being a double. I honestly thought he had it too, but he has put Res down to four health. So this retake going to be a lot more manageable. Downside, no Molotovs, no HEs, and a spray damage through the smoke. But Norman will stand tall, delivers. They'd love to have a Molotov at this stage, but it's just a HE and a flashbang. 
There is a smoke in play for Advent anyway. And Vici move as one. A swarm of counter-terrorists trying to reclaim what was once theirs. Forrest gonna swat away Zoking. Have a quick peek across the wall, which is being diffused in the smoke, but Dennis, his sixth sense was tingling, and he will not allow that to occur. The round is done. Vici are doing significant damage to Nip, but it's gonna be 4-4. The bomb will detonate. I'm really curious about this plant spot from NIP. Obviously something they've discussed as a plan to come into it, but, you know, some chances. We saw it in the pistol round. That round, immediately after planting, Lecro just dies to spam through the smoke, so... That spots a certain element of danger for the ninjas, but doesn't matter so far too much. Four to four. Almond has that AUG. I'm assuming you can see that plant pretty easily from the upper ramp. Yeah, Bomb in a bit of a precarious position at the end, but they just about held on, courtesy of Dennis. Now, as you highlighted, Ormond has the Orc, which he was able to save. In the meanwhile, a couple P250s for the utility for Vici, but Brez not going to be too deterred by that, decides to push straight out. Good to see and I keep playing a bit more aggro. Beautiful spray control from Rez and Forest. He yields two more casualties. And Vici now just have Advent. It is important to highlight, though, that Nip have very low plays. Rez, Lecro, Forest, all below 40 HP. The P250 could be a cannon at this stage. Nice job by Rez. Just holding the side of the bomb train, waiting for someone to walk around to try and stop the plant. Three kills in the round for him. He's at seven and four. Forest, again, leading the way. Nine and five. And NIP take their first lead of the map. Five rounds on their T side so far, looking pretty good. Weapons coming out again though as the, f oh, not the full losing bonus, they have four round losing, losing bonus at the moment, so almost there for Beachy, but that's enough to give them the AWP. Three AUGs in play, one M4. Just the one kit, though, they're gonna have to be careful. Res again, aggro. This time's a Molotov to greet him. I like that play, though. In, in another another round, he likely gets that kill. Get right's gotta be careful. Oh, that flashbang didn't work as well as he would have thought. Went for the jump. Aggressive play. Three members of Vici inside. I don't know if he spotted all three. Certainly, he saw two. There's the AUG. As Rez tries to take advantage of a weird situation. And of course, he's up to task, and even he's dropped by Almond. Great round for Vici, and this is exactly what they need if they want to get back into their winning ways. Five players still up. Lacro can't deal with any of them. Orman will survive with just 19 health and a 4k to his name. Not bad at all. And it's... It's a strange thing to say, but I'm glad that we're seeing Nip at least die while playing aggressively because yesterday they seemed so tentative, they seemed so passive. Yeah, that opening map of their series, they did seem like a little bit of like the, the elimination nerves were getting to him, which is interesting considering how experienced Dennis, Force, and Get Right all are. Even Rez and Lecro at this point, you have to say, pretty experienced in big events. We're all tied up, Vince. NIP, they've invested everything they have left into this round. Early Molotov gonna come in, they don't want to deal with that early aggression. They're fortunate to get away without having been picked in the previous round. Some info gathering happening, also an Ivy while a skirmish breaks out on the A side. So far it's going the way of the Asian team. Dennis looking to tip the scales back in Nip's favor, but Vici will regain the lead. So we are going back and forth now between the two teams. That was so close to turning in the favor of NIP. Advent coming to the smoke and picking off Rez when he had a nade in his hands, I think is really what kind of saved the day. They would have had an open avenue into the A bomb site. So Vici sustain after being reset earlier. Able to string two rounds together, and now they have plenty of utility, plenty of money. They even have the AWP on Kaze still. It's the ninjas who are back to pistols. We've seen them win a lot of these. Not too much invested. One Deagle, one P250 for the for the offense. So unless that Deagle is going to find you some picks on Forest, I'm not sure that NIP can create an opening. Yeah, typically the rounds that Nip have won in this similar situation, they've had a couple more Desert Deagles, maybe a bit of Kevlar. So if a bomb does go awry, they can pick it up and use it against the 
enemy team, but this is pretty bare bones. Forest and his Desert Eagle currently residing. Back towards the bathroom side. Gonna start to move up there now. Vici pretty centralized as you can see from the flyover. A triple stack on A, watching all the angles. I like how passive they're being. In a round where you know you have such an advantage of long range weapons, just stay back, no one get close to the choke points, let them out if need be. Even towards the inner bomb site. And potentially giving up the plant, which isn't the biggest deal in the world. Freeman does have a Molotov too, so if he starts to see the players jump across, the Molotov can be put down, stop the bomb from being planted. Unfortunately for Nip, they have no smoke to counteract that play. Yeah, this should be a slaughter. Unless Forrest baits Dennis properly and hits a stunner, you can see Forrest coming out second and actually taking a little bit to get those kills. There's now a way for them to drop down with the bomb, but Almond's going to adjust. He's found Forrest. Bomb is in the site. This plant would be quite nice, and it is going to go down from get right. It was taken out immediately, so is Rez, but the extra $800 is going to be very, very nice for them in the next round. Full losing bonus not built up. It'll be three rounds plus the 800 and now they can get whatever they want. Forrest got 6,200. We haven't seen anyone on NIP bring out the op yet on this T side, so that might be a nice change in the way they attack, but they go for the five AKs. Suggests aggression, suggests a set play. As he said, I mean, honestly, that, I feel like that was mission accomplished. They got a bomb plant, they got a kill with what, uh, I think it was P250 and Desert Eagle. That's pretty much all they had. Yeah, it's not, not a bad thing to bring out. Took so long for Freeman to get the kill in the first two players. Force was eventually able to tag him down just enough. Seven to five in the favor of the Chinese side. More aggression towards Ivy. They've done this a number of times. Again, they're both completely blind. They're both at Ivy. Lepro's going to get aggressive, daring Kaze to hit it a spectacular shot. It's not to be. And now they can press the issue. Lepro with three quick kills and a great trade from Force. This is surely a round in the ninja's favor. A four on one. Make that two now. And they haven't got the bomb planted either. Starting to make a move with Rez towards the B side of the mat. So Freeman has done so much work. Still 100% of his health. Still has himself a smoke and a flashbang. This round may have a couple more twists and turns in it yet. The fact that he has 100 health is important. This is a winnable two on one. Or one on two, I should say. Looking for that peak, waiting for it with the arm. They double peek towards lane and he's found one. Somehow he's been able to isolate a res using the noise perfectly. Headshot to the side and NIP get their sixth, but that was way more difficult than it seemed like it was going to be. Very unfortunate for Freeman. He just wasn't expecting two players to be stacked. Thought the second maybe on catwalk, maybe ramp. Was pushing aggressively to try and beat the peak. That was a sick round from Lecro and they almost, they almost let it slip away. Talked in the pre-show about how quiet he's been and how impactful he's been for the ninjas at time. This was good. He saw his opportunity and he went for it. That happened so fast that Zoking wasn't able to react to the situation. I'm so happy to say we've actually got a game on our hands here, Moses. That's a beautiful thing, isn't it? Here we go. Dennis legged now. He's going to have to back away. He wanted to go for an aggressive peek. Four player stack on A. In the meanwhile, this leaves Freeman alone with an org looking at box halls. Flashbang into Pop Dog, gonna have a peek here. This is gonna backfire though. Get Right was not affected by that at all. Staring into the wall. Smart play from Get Right. They might be able to catch Freeman. This is a pretty bold play. Now holding an off angle, but he'll have a quick flank down the ladder. It's only Dennis with 19 HP. Three players defending the A bomb site for Vici, and they're far back. Two players in connector, including the AWP. Almond's in a bit of a weird situation because Freeman is so far pushed up, he doesn't exactly seem to know where he wants to go. Well, Dennis is going to get dropped here. Pretty comfortably has found out some intel, but doesn't really tell Nip a great deal. Only saw one player in box holes. Now I'm going to smoke outside of Ivy. Advent feels like he may have to push through here. Flashback in his eyes. Can hear the footsteps though, but now Forrest goes in. Here comes Advent from the backside, but Get Right's watching. His teammates' backs. 
And that's going to give the advantage to Nip, but there's 15 seconds left, and Kaze is struck. Dealing the fatal blow to Lacro. Bomb sprawls out. 10 seconds now, and Freeman is on the move. Can he get the drop on third play? Yes, he can. Spray is not on point, and Get Bright, as he has so many times through the years, is going to dig Nip out of a deep ditch. Impact kills. That last one obviously winning the round, but it's the route he runs after he goes towards in or he goes back towards mid and he's pushing up that first lane and he's able to get the trade as the Ivy defender comes through the smoke and that was the big one. Because that player coming through the smoke had two kills free until Get Right shut him down, was only able to get the one. All tied up and in this last round, a scattered buy for VG. P250 on Allman, Scout on Freeman, SMG on Advent, and Zoki. Dennis tries his hand with the AWP, not going to connect. In the meanwhile, Zoe King's going to make a move into Pop Dog with his MP9. Haven't really seen Vici play aggressively in terms of flanking. Seen a couple of moments where they pushed Ivy, but that's about it. No one trying to get through main. We're going to see this flash into peak again. Forrest not really in position to go for it yet. Well, we have seen some aggression, remember, from Vici. They've, they've had a couple of those rounds where they pushed two down Ivy to peak, to peak alley, and they've just been shut down each and every time they've done it, unfortunately. It hasn't gotten them anything, and it seems to be what they want to rely on. Oh, oh dear. Kill. Well, that's payback for Kaze's team kill earlier, I guess. Is Lekko going to check this, though? Yes, he is. I think he spotted maybe a barrel. Advent saw his as well. Molotov going to force Zoking back, and is it going to spread? No, but all of his teammates are dying. Good shots from Rez. Good awareness. Kaze out in the open. He's got a wheel way around E-Box. Get right's got that one. Now watching the flank. He's ready for Alvin. And he's gonna have not a kill. Not yet. Alman on borrowed time is gonna find the kill on to get right. It's a 1v2. Only has a P250 to his name. You desperately love to grow a few meters on those arms and pick up the AK, but it's not gonna be happening. And the ninjas will take the lead going through to the second half. 8-7 on their map pick, the opening map in this series. We mentioned there's no more mistakes to give if you're the ninjas trying to move on to the legend stage with the legends in their lineup. An impressive first half. We'll see how the second one goes when we return from the break.
8-7 lead for the Ninjas transitioning over to the CT side of Train. It's Forrest and Rez leading the way, but it's Freeman and Ullman on Vici Game that are lighting up the scoreboard. 20 kills for Ullman, 16 for Freeman, but they still find themselves with a one-round deficit. And if they want to win this map in regulation, they have to get nine rounds on their T side. That is a tall task. Especially against the Ninjas on their pick of map. This is going to be a rough one. And Ullman also 132 ADR. It's unbelievable that Vici are actually trailing at this stage, but this pistol could be everything. If Nip can pick this up, it's going to give them a great platform to build off on their CT side. Vici Gaming in the meanwhile, sending four players strong over towards the B side of the map. Going to actually be dropping the bomb, so a bit of a declaration of intent. We're not going to see any early aggression for the time being. Going to be feeling this one out first. Far back on the defense. Tennis wants this fight, though. The USP reigns supreme at this range. No continued aggression, though, as Vici shows just one player. They're spread across the map. They don't want to commit to anything just yet. Rez is going to hear all this jumping now, sees the feet, takes a shot, tags him, and that's going to let Vici know equally that he's here. Rez has to be careful. Double drop coming down, an immediate headshot, but Freeman gets an important trade. Now the bomb has been picked up, going to make a move straight towards the A side. Molotov to the back, making sure no one can peek from the right side of the site, allowing the terrorists to, to funnel their way centrally, directly to the heart of round 16. Kaze is going to be picking up a couple, but it's by and large going to be going the way of Nip for the time being, as Forrest is going to land himself too as well, leaving Orman to try and repel the onslaught, try and cave in the CT's Forest is feeling it. That's three kills with the USP, and it will pick up the second pistol. Forrest wants that, that legend stage so bad. That, that is a really nice pistol round. One thing that NIP lost track of was that one player coming along that first alley, along the wall. Able to wrap onto the bomb site and find Get Right. That almost opened the round up, but spectacular shots from Forrest. Three kills. Both pistols now going... Oh, no, excuse me. They didn't win the pistol in the first round, did they? Vici no, did. I believe Vici did, yeah. So it has gone even. I take it all back. And this crisp aim from Forrest takes his face off. <laughs> timeout, Vici. Second round of the second half. There had been no timeouts used in that first half. Vici wants to talk some things over, and with that plant, I mean, they're all sitting right around 3,000, so they could go for some kind of force up. That'd be a big gamble, though. Down seven to nine on your on your T side on the harder half of train. If you're going to invest early, you better make damn sure you win that round. It's so crazy to me that that Almond and Freeman are just dominating the server. They still find themselves two rounds down. 21 kills for Almond, 130 ADR. 17 kills for Freeman, 112 ADR. The most on Nip is Forrest with 15, and the highest ADR is 89 on Forrest. I don't want to single a player out, but unfortunately, Advent's <laughs> on the other side of the coin. 3 and 10 with 25 ADR only. Yeah, I guess that does even things out, doesn't it? That's going to be a bit of an issue. Well, they don't go for the full investment. Deagles, four of them, a P250 on Advent as well with the utility. Good utility damage, or good initial damage from NIP on Almond and Zoking. Even Rez is able to grab Freeman down to half HP. Is by not doing a whole lot for Vici quite yet. Vici gonna be limping their way towards A-Main at this stage. A bunch of injured players. Nip don't really need to do anything at this stage. They've got every angle covered. They've got the advantage. See no grenades being used just yet. Flashbang going to be flying over towards the E-Box. It's a triple spray. Rez is going to get two. Forrest alongside him with one. And the round is over in a heartbeat. 10-7. Yeah, that, uh, that one flashbang can't do enough to both having a player at E-Box with an M4 and the UMP in ladder room. Good round from Nip. How much are they going to upgrade here? They know the buy is coming out, especially with that plant in the pistol. But they still have a U they still have two UMPs and actually a scout on Lecro. So... Maybe feeling like they have enough advantage to where they can risk playing one round with a couple lesser weapons. So there's actually a pretty decent opportunity. As Kaze has an AWP, four AKs around it on this attacking side. Ooh. In terms of firepower, Vici certainly a step ahead, but the early trade gonna go back and forth. 
that's pretty cool. NIP puts both UMPs to get aggressive and... Oh, Forrest comes right in. The aim punch, though. Kaze got drilled. And now they're going to try and trade that out. Forrest slowly backs away, but Dennis up above is providing cover. NIP, they have everything figured out. Two kills for Dennis, and the op on Omen is going to get one kill, but what more can he find? It's not looking good, is it? Well, there's the answer instantly. 11 to 7, and Vici off the back of their full buy have been silenced again. Barely anything to invest in this round. Some pistols, probably not much else. It almost feels like they, they maybe felt a lot of pressure and sped up that strategy. As soon as that push towards Inner came, they just booked it down ladder and just attacks, right? So there's a minute and a half left, and all these Vici players are just stringing out. No one's blind. There's no smokes to block off these augs. Maybe a little bit rushed, which is understandable considering the situation they're in. Nice shot from Lecro. He's going to back away. He's got Get Red in the lower ramp to try and slow things down, but Lecro is safely out of there. So a man advantage for the ninjas. Foreman, who originally was going down to Pop Dog to try and get some kind of a flank in play because they've lost the first player, decides to try and bolster up the box all side. Dennis is going to see action momentarily. It's always going to go his way. Not a single point of health has been lost for the Swedes. And Vici has a very real possibility of a five-round deficit, but Forrest has been plucked out Ooh. courtesy of Vorman. Some good movement <laughs> to actually survive and keep the AK, but just delaying the inevitable. Look at Advent. Snake in the grass. Going to wrap around. He wants to find Dennis. Not going to go for the knife, even though he had his back turned. Just wants the kill. Now he's got the AUG. What more can he do? If he can open something up for Kaze, that'd be massive. There is a player, Reds, that you could see him backing off. He was overexposed at E-Box with no one to watch his flank. And they I don't think they have any idea where Advent went. Now they know. Now they certainly know. Kaze with one, and it's a two-on-two. -two. They do have control of the bomb as well. But NIP can rotate pretty quick. NIP, how have you got into this position? You are commanding this round. 25 seconds, and it should still go their way, but the damage has been done, and get right, honestly, was pretty close to death himself at the end. So Nip will get a 12-7 lead, but far too close for comfort. Yeah, smart play from Advent, just staying posted up. Reading that get right was going to swing with him, just knowing there could possibly be a second player there. 7-12, to 12, though. Vici still not able to get any production on their offense, and they're going to call a timeout. Another buy coming in with the AKs, and you might as well use your timeouts while you've got them on this map. It's slowly getting out of reach, but they did great damage to the economy of NIP, so they cannot let this opportunity slip away. If they want a chance of coming back in this, making a run, stealing the map away, or forcing overtime, they need to get on the winning ways right now. It's cool to see Nip as well, a team that is pretty versatile when it comes to their AWPers. You sometimes see Dennis pick it up, Forrest, Lecro. Depends yeah. on how they're feeling on the, the given game, I guess. Kind of hard to anti-strat though, I'd imagine, if you're trying to figure out how to play against Nip. Keeps things spicy. Well, here we go. Let's see if Vici can bounce back. It is four unanswered rounds on the CT side for Ninjas and Pajamas. And if Vici lose this, it could be the beginning of the end for Train. No quick play. First step for Vici is they need to force Rez out of ladder room at some point. He's been in there the majority of this half. Was there a pistol round? Was there the ensuing round with the UMP? Been in there a couple times with the guns. Ladder room is so critical to a terror side that's able to, to help them maneuver between the bomb sites. Get him out of tough situations quickly. NIP have expended quite a bit of their grenades already, though. Rez is able to hold the line with two, shutting down the A main push. And also Pop Dog. Exquisite play by Rez single handedly, closing this round off. And now Freeman has the tenuous task of even doing a bit of damage in this round now. I'd have to watch that back, because I don't think Rez had any utility left when that hit came in, but it looked like the ladder players threw that Molotov down to try and force Rez away from ladder room, but it was so mistimed with that hit outside that the player above ladder couldn't actually drop to help them get out mid. Rez was just able to kind of get a bunch of free kills. 
That's an awkward flush. <laughs> Just destroyed himself. Yeah, it is kind of uh, uncomfortable. Rez gonna grab a new angle. Immediate headshot. Great round from Rez. You can see the strength of that position, not only holding ladder room, but able to help out in mid as well with very good effect. 13 to 7. NIP with a six round lead. And 5 to nothing run on the CT. I just muted myself halfway through a sentence. <laughs> <laughs> Classic. And also to just add a little bit of salt in the wounds, their economy's not fantastic. They're going to be able to force a buy of AKs, but a couple of players are going to be a bit low on utility. Galil picked up on Kaze and Almond. Three smokes, a couple of Molotovs. One's just been tossed out towards the Ivy side. Just doesn't give them many options though. Starting to snake their way towards the B side of the map. And get right is starting to make a move back. He does have an orc though, so again long range is gonna be on his side. Ooh, Dennis. Feast or famine. They jump down. He's a little bit blind. Can't hit the first shot. He's got a transition. omen has got a kill. That's finally Rez taken in ladder room, but Dennis is going to follow things up. Three players here at the center site for Vici. Get right hasn't been able to get into the action just yet. Molotov out. Maybe force Freeman into the open. It's Zoking they've got to worry about. He's close up. He can be such a hindrance to this retake for NIP. There's Get right burning him alive. Checking the corner as well. Get right's got two. Freeman and Orman, what can you get done? No grenades to counteract the push. Both of them on the lower side. Freeman's gonna go one for one, and Lecro repeats, gets his second, and Ninja's in pajamas. We'll move 14 7 in bleed. Everyone performing well for NIP. You have to think of Rez and Force as kind of the driving, driving force of this team, but Dennis, Lecro, and Get Right are playing very solid. Not a whole lot of openings for Vici to exploit in this defense. Get right pushing up on the high train, the oil tanker, finding two. Almond has 25 kills now. He leads the server. And yet this team are getting battered 14-7. Yeah. That always hurts. This must be what Elo Hell feels like. <laughs> <laughs> this could be the last chance, Moses, to mount a significant real comeback. If not, we're heading to Inferno. Is their choice of map. So King going to try and take matters into his own hands. Doesn't care about the smoke, he's just going to push. We haven't seen this kind of aggression too many times from the Asian team. Maybe he's going to get rewarded. I think he will. This will be interesting. I don't know. I mean, they might have missed his chance, but I don't think they'll expect it whatsoever. I don't think they would have thought that anyone would have pushed through that smoke in mid. No one's really acknowledging that this is a possibility. Forrest backing away. Rez on just the other side of that outcropping, but Forrest has an eye on that choke point, that gap in the trains. It's all about timing for Zoking. Still hasn't made his move. Outer train yard, this A bomb site, under a lot of pressure. So King's been spotted. Rez should be going for the peak, but Kaze lends his teammate a hand, and Zoking will be getting a second in this trade. Dennis finally does stand up for ninjas and gives Vici a bit of an issue, but that has been rectified. As now they're going to procure the bomb plant onto the site. Vici going to decide to push aggressively afterwards into connector, but Get Right was laid waiting with his orc. Two on two. Up in the air, really anybody's round. There is a bit of utility for ninjas in pajamas, nothing for Vici. Lacro's gonna see if Verticality will bring him victory. Oh, the shot onto Advent! Impressive reaction speed. Alman now is gonna go down to the same hands. Lacro's on a tear, and ninjas in pajamas have an eight round lead. Vici's got it. Their, their players just have to be scratching their head. First get right on the defense, out lurks that player trying to flank in, or and that Molotov in towards Z just completely ruins Vici's day. He was the last member alive to stop that. A great retake and a two on three. Lecro with the op making it look easy. Vici just have no answers for this NIP performance. They do at least get the bomb plant. They had the full losing bonus. That extra hundred dollars is going to help them out with utility. So another chance, but the idea of them winning eight in a row just seems like a fairy tale at this point. 
It really does, which is kind of a microcosm of Vici at this major. A fairy tale yeah. is dangling in front of them, the idea of qualifying to the next stage. I believe we call it a Cinderella story. Sure do, but this one may not have a happy ending. Oh dear. Oh man. Four of Resin Force have an idea. Dennis with the off angle as well. It's a slaughter. No ability to trade those kills. Oh, he almost just dropped a Molotov at his feet. And Rez takes off the head, and this is going to be a quick finish for NIP. It's going to be 16 to 7. The ninjas will take us to map 2. Zero rounds, one from Vici on their T side. This is a nip that we haven't quite seen yet this tournament. And there's going to be many happy Swedes out there after Fnatic fell earlier. Yeah, it felt like communication was on point. Obviously, the individuals there. Rez finishes with 23 kills, 13 deaths. Force was the one who was really kicking off early. A couple big kills over.